The history of aconite processing begins in the Han Dynasty in the classic of the jade envelope, uh, the Yuhan. The, and in this method, they talk about blast frying or uh, pow, pow frying, blast frying. So this is actually one of the methods that we see futsa also in the Shanghan Lun as pow futsa, blast fried futsa. That was the original method of just putting it in hot sand and letting it pop like a popcorn kernel, essentially. Um, and then the Jin Dynasty, they develop a carbonizing method where you just burn it until it's black. Um, Northern and Southern Dynasties, we have um, like the second edition of Lei Gung's Powder Loon, and he talks about soaking it in yeast running water and then boiling with the black bean soak. Um, and that kind of alchemical process, I would say that, um, you know, in Chinese medicine, we think the yang actually talking about futsa and its ability to boost the yang is essentially boosting the sun rising. And as the sun rises, it traverses the sky from the west to the east. And that is also kind of recapitulated in the eastward running water. As anything moves from the west to the east, it's gaining, gaining in yang energy to a certain degree, halfway. Once it goes halfway, it's only got downward to go. Um, <clears throat> So Tong Dynasty, we have honey-coated roasting in the Tianjin Yaofeng, and then wrapping in wet paper and placing in hot embers until the wrapping becomes burnt and black. You know, have fun with that one at home. In the Song Dynasty, we have a bunch of different ones. There's soaking, you know, soaking in water, soaking in brine, soaking in, in Fu Shao Mai, and then making this type of fermented leaven out of it. Um, carbonizing still. Stir frying, stir frying with Huang Lian. Huang Lian is Coptic, Coptic chinensis, so using an extremely bitter cold thing to process with the really warm acrid thing creates this balancing function. And then ginger processing, and then everybody's favorite, processing with a small child's urine. <laughs> um, and then an even more extravagant thing of, that I couldn't really translate accurately, something about making one opening enter cinnabar dough wrapped roasting. I have no idea what that is, but it's a combination of of using cinnabar with aconite, so um, let's just move on from that because nothing good will likely come of that <laughs> for most of us, anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. If you want to learn how to work with uh, mercury, I would recommend studying with Robert Allen Bartlett. Robert Allen Bartlett is up here in uh, uh, up on the res up there to to Lip, Yeah, so uh, he's the only person I know that actually has the knowledge of mineral alchemy in the local area. Mm. Of course, you won't get to the, anyway, yeah. The nice thing to know, that there's a way to get to the deeper end of this stuff, if you are so inclined. In the Ming Dynasty, we have more boiling methods, boiling with black bean, boiling with gonsao, boiling with salt and gonsao and child's urine, and, and, and coptis and glycerize and the kid's urine. Um, <laughs> And it sounds ludicrous, right? But there's this idea that like aconite is very warm and acrid, and you're trying to give it to someone that's really cold, and you put it in there, and the body just refuses it. It's like they're, they're, the you know like like dissolves like, and, and and so the hot thing just gets repelled by the body. The the child's urine is very cold, also. This in in Chinese medicine ideation. So we process it with the child's urine, and so then it sneaks in there like the Trojan horse. And the cold thing traverses through the cold terrain and then gets down in the stomach and then... <laughs> and then the warming function happens from the inside out and it drives out all the cold. This is the ideal effect. Um, yeah, so also frying, frying with vinegar, bran frying, fong fung salt, black bean frying. I mean, you could see fong fung we use for uh, bee syndrome for arthritic pain. And so maybe processing with the fong fung is accentuating aconites or a futsa's function for treating uh, arthritic pain, bee syndrome. And then lake salt and pig fat frying. Pig fat, pig fat can function similar to the child's urine, the same kind of ideation, something really cold to help it sneak its way in. And then um, more methods with urine. Uh, and it sounds crazy, but so when we go back to the, sh the Sheng Han Lun, the original formulary that talks about formulas with aconite in it, like Sini Tong and um, Tong Lai Sini Tong, which is child's urine aconite. So we have this whole progression. You're like, I tried to give them the aconite and they, and, it just, and they just vomited it back up. So what I need to do now is to add it in, and I need to decoct it in child's urine to process it and now I give it to them and it works. So we have this whole evolution from already from 200 years ago or from 200 
AD, and then they're still conserving these methods and doing it a little bit differently. Like, they're like, well, maybe we'll soak it for a while first, or maybe we'll add Feng Feng and Gan Sao. We get to the Qing Dynasty, and then we have more methods of adding more herbs and with boiling, doing some processing with euphorbia and wine, with Gan Sui and wine, and then frying methods, salt cured, more urine. Um, modern day, we end up with like 40 different methods to process Futsa. The most common ones I've passed around, sort of. I passed around Bai Fu Pian, which is the white one that is actually yellow. Uh, Heishun Pian. I could make my Bai Fu Pian if I, I could make it white if I sulfur smoked it. That's what the processing books say to do. I don't sulfur smoke my herbs. Um, Heishun Pian is black. Uh, steamed aconite with the peel intact. Don Fu Pian is the licorice process after turning to, uh, is a more complicated process. And then Pao Fu Pian is blast fried. So uh, this whole process kind of looks like this. We start with the Shong Futsa, which we have. All right, I guess. Did, did these things all come back to the front? Does anybody want to see them again? I'm going to talk about Shong Futsa. Shong Futsa is this one. We start with Shong Futsa. In this case, it's actually the whole tuber unprocessed. And then we're going to, well, we do a brine soak on it. So the brine soak is essentially, Shong Futsa is boiled a little bit, half boiled, and then brine soaked for a long time. But brine is like essentially add enough salt to water until your fork will stand up straight in it. Maybe not that much, but then add, uh, and then you add your futsa to it, and you soak it for a long time, and then when you're done with the initial boiling and the brine soaking, then you can start processing to one of these three common ones, the Bai Fu Pian, the Hei Shen Pian, or uh, Yan Fu Pian. So the first thing that we do is, these are three forms of mime that I've processed with Chung Fu on the left, Bai Fu in the middle, and Hei Shen Pian on the right. The first thing that we do is we generate the nifu pion, like the half process, half processed futsa, nifutsa. So first we wash the uh, shung fu tubers and, and then uh, we soak them in the edible mother liquid, which is the brine. After soaking in the brine, uh, you'll boil them in the brine. And then after boiling them in the brine, you will wash them and that is called half processed futsa, nifutsa. So here we have the fresh aconite tubers and the brine soak. And then after brine soaking, for for me, I brine soak them as, until I have time <laughs> to get to them. <laughs> I have, I still have stuff brine soaking in my refrigerator from last year's harvest. So, and the next harvest is only a few months from now. I'll probably never get to it. It's nicely preserved. Um, boiling in the mother liquid and then after boiling, we have Nifu Pian. Now we're moving to the generation of Haitian Pian, the black steam futsa. So it says to cut longitudinally the slices into eight millimeters in thickness, and then soak it and rinse in water. Um, yeah, a lot of books, they will just say to steam it. You know, and I've looked in quite a few different powder manuals to compare. And so one of the ones that I looked in said that you should actually paint it with, uh, canola oil and brown sugar mix, rapeseed and sugar. I think that's funny. So I was processing for a long time. I had a few and I didn't know this. And so I would just steam it, you know? And it's like, you leave the black peel on. And when you steam it, uh, that black stuff infuses through the peel, the pigment in the peel infuses through, and then it steams and it goes back down into the water. And then that steams back through it too. And so it's like the pigment in the peel is actually turning it brown. And this is how I process it for like three years. And then I read, I read this method of painting in canola oil. And um, I think it's just BS. I think it's a bad idea, you know, because what you're going to do is you're going to, you essentially get a head start on turning it brown. And then you can sort of not, pro, not steam it for as long. It's kind of, you know, it's just suspicious to me. The other thing that you want to do is end up with an oily, lustrous product. And by painting it with oil to begin with, you're already painting on the oil luster in a way. This is sort of, um, this is like the bad level, level of artistry at that point, you know what I mean? Um, and I tried it and I experimented with it and I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the products I produced and I felt like I was cheating the market in a way that's unsafe. Um, so 
before steaming and then during steaming like I said like I didn't paint those you know obviously they're white when they started and uh, I steam them and then after steaming for like eight hours they have turned brown um, and then we dry them a little bit so bake to half dryness and then dry in the sun to complete and then you'll end up with Haitian Pion that, that's probably my first attempt it doesn't look that great and then this is a little bit better so um, it should be shaped like Baifu Pion, and I've cropped this really closely so that you can't tell that it isn't shaped like Baifu Pion. Um, when we read the method, it actually says to cut longitudinally, like down, and I cut horizontally, so I cut them into discs. You really want this longitudinal shape because then you can see the actual shape, the three-dimensional outline of the tuber. This is desirable. Um, so yes, it should be shaped like in that the reverse teardrop shape. Um, the edges should be dark brown in color. The sliced faces should be a dull yellow color and oily, smooth with luster, hard and brittle, and the broken face has a horned appearance. A slight smell and a, and a bland taste. Quality Haitian peon should be big and flat slices with an even pale brown in color and an oily, smooth luster. And ideally the oily, smooth luster would be more of a demonstration of your really highly skilled steaming technique and not your artistry with canola oil and brown sugar um yeah and then, i mean it doesn't say to paint that on at the end it says to paint it on before steaming 